Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the Grundig 4006. And it's been a while. I've been waiting for the FM section, which uh, hasn't arrived yet, but uh, I believe it's on its way. And I decided to go ahead and continue with the AM. If you recall, we were actually receiving AM. This thing has only got long wave and medium wave. But there was a strange phenomenon, actually. This thing was very, very quiet between stations. And I couldn't quite understand what that was about. The one thought I had was that perhaps the alignment was completely out. Or some critical components were a little bit messed up. But there wasn't much here. And I'll show you the schematic in a second and show you what it is that I changed. But the components that were replaced, the capacitors that were replaced, I think number, what is it, four or five. Here's one there. This was actually had been replaced with a film cap, which I think was perfectly good, but it was the wrong value. So somebody was in here and just, well, I found three capacitors had been replaced with values that had nothing to do with uh, what's in the schematic. So I replaced those. I also replaced a electrolytic, which is that one over there. So very few components were actually changed. And every time I did change them, I went back and checked that um, reception was still there. And it is indeed there. And it's still very quiet between bands. So I decided to go ahead and start the alignment. And if we just take a quick look at the schematic, this capacitor was replaced. It's actually the FM uh, discriminator cap, uh, four point, it was four microfarads, this thing was reading about seven. So that was one I replaced. This we'd seen before. And then on the rest of the schematic, this is what I've replaced here, one, two, three, four. So in total, there were five capacitors replaced on this uh, section of the, of the radio, which is not much. And I don't think anything else is critically wrong with this. So I'm going to set this up and I'm going to just do an alignment. And the alignment here is going to be very simple. I'm going to feed a 460 kilohertz signal into the uh, grid of the ECH81. This thing has a 460 kilohertz IF. And I've uh, connected the two side speakers to the lab speakers here and I can put dummy loads on them, which is what I plan to do. And I'm going to measure the result on the center speaker, um, on the AC uh, meter there. So we can align the two IF transformers as we normally do. There's one here. In fact, it's easier to see in the other schematic. Basically, we're aligning this here and that there. So one, two, Roman numeral one, two, three, four. Now, as usual, these IF transformers have the FM section and the AM section, but uh, we can see which ones are which from the other information we have on the set. I do have the uh, alignment instructions, but I'm going to do this very simply. And I'm going straight from the grid of the ECH81 all the way through. And I'm not going to bother too much with some of the other instructions here. It's a very simple set doesn't even have shortwave, so it should be quite easy. And here are the coils. It tells us that we have above the uh, chassis and below the chassis, as usual, there's one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to set this up and do those in no particular order. Just come backwards and forwards between them, make sure that I get the best response possible. And then we'll see if that does, does anything to the noise between channels, because maybe this thing is completely unaligned or misaligned. Let me set that up and we'll get started. So this is what we've got, 460 kilohertz. The amplitude is as low as it'll go. I don't believe I can get that any lower. Nope. 0.7 millivolts RMS, still too high. But I've got modulation on. It's AM modulation, 30% um, depth, and a tone of 600 hertz. So that's about right. 
and I switch on modulation. I then just activate it there. I've got the signal coming out of here going into my stepped attenuator. It goes into the input. I've attenuated maximum here, so I've got 3 dB, 6, 12, and 18, or rather 24. Very low signal coming out of here. And that signal, which is AC coupled, if you recall, that attenuator has got um, capacitors just to block DC. That's connected to pin 2, which is the grid of the ECH81. And the two transformers I need to align are that one there. This is the top one. This is the corresponding one at the bottom. And that one there, again, top and bottom. So I'll be doing that one, that one, and then the underside ones. We'll see the result of that on the, um, on the AC voltmeter. I've got the uh, audio connected, or rather the two outputs connected to the dummy load. So here's the, uh, the left and right speaker connected to the dummy load. The other one is connected to another a resistor dummy load. That's the center speaker. And that is being measured by the AC millivolt meter. Set it to one volt. I'm not sure what level we're going to get. So we're about ready to go. I'm going to switch on the power. I've got minimum limit on here, so all the light bulbs are in parallel over there. Restriction is still on, but it's on minimum. And I can hear the crackle. I've got the volume on max. I can hear the crackle from the speaker over there. But we're still reading nothing. Let's go down. Yeah, there's a bit of noise. Just a bit of noise. Let's put it on 0.3 volts. And now I'm going to activate the signal generator. Signal generator is on. Everything seems to be fine. 460 kilohertz. I've got maximum attenuation, so I'm going to start reducing the attenuation. I'm going to take off 3 dB. I can just, just hear it. Take off another 6 dB. And now I can hear it. So what I'm going to do is put that on dummy load so we don't have to hear it. And I'm going to keep an eye on the meter and see if we can start seeing it. Take off another, what is it, 12 dB. Oh yeah, I can see that. That seems to be something I can work with. So I'm going to start playing, <laughs> twiddling the... Um, the cause and see what we get. Start with the top one there. Eye on the meter. Oh, that's going down. That's going down. That was pretty much peaked. That's pretty much peaked. Right, I'm going to do the underside one now. This one, by the way, was number number three. I'm going to do number four now, which is on the underside. I'm using a um, ceramic screwdriver adjustment tool. Uh, maybe got a bit more there. Just a bit more there. I'll do the other underside. to get it in there. I don't think I've got it yet. It's a little bit of wax on there, I'm trying to get the wax off. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that was a bit more. Not much. Let's try the top one now. This is now two. That was one. Let's try this one. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. See that? Okay, what I'm going to do, I've got, um, what is it, 12? 
I'm going to reduce the attenuation, we'll increase attenuation, just bring it down a bit. I've given it another 3 dBs. Okay, that's peaking there. That's about the peak. And that was quite a significant increase, especially on that last one. So somebody obviously fiddled with that one. I'm just going to go back. This thing is, uh, I'm going to give it a stronger signal because this thing is fluctuating a bit. I can always put it there. What if I just put all those Okay, that's now got, what is that, 21, 22 dBs, what are, is it 22 dBs? 21 dBs total. So I'm going to go through them all again and just try and fine-tune it, maybe get a bit more out of it. Yeah, not really. That was one of the underside ones. Barely, just a bit. Every bit counts. Go to the top two. That was just a little bit more. And the other top one. Oh, that was me touching the, uh, the wire. Okay, I think we've peaked it. Simple as that. No big deal. Brilliant. As usual, I've got the mini whip connected. I'll give it medium wave. I've got the speakers connected. Sounds good. Put the microphone close to the speaker that I've got for the mids. because um, basically we're just getting the middle speaker there. The um, between bands is still fairly quiet. So maybe that's just a characteristic of this. That is pretty lively. There's my favorite beacon, Porto Santo. Porto Santo is the place I've just spent a week's holiday in. Was kidnapped, dragged there, screaming and shouting, as I said in the last video. But I had to make the most of it, and now I'm back to reality. And God. Let's see if we can get BBC, what is it, BBC Radio 4? That is it, 200 kilohertz. This thing is coming from the south of England, this is BBC Radio 4. 200 kilohertz on long wave, and <laughs> this is being picked up with a mini whip. That sounds bloody good.
That, my friends, is very, very good. I'm, I'm very, very pleased and surprised. I thought this thing would be a lot more out of tune. Um, the silence between the stations was concerning me a bit. I couldn't understand why it was so quiet. I thought it was a fault. As it happens, it's probably just good design. Hey, I wonder. But it's working. And I want to do a quick check on the... Um, I want to do a quick check on the actual uh, alignment of the bands. Let me set that up quickly. Okay, here's what I got. The um, medium wave is aligned on 560, which is over here. And this is what I'm getting. It's one millimeter out. Definitely not worth messing with that. On the top end, it's aligned at 1450, so I'm just going to dial that up onto the signal generator. 1.45, go to the top end. That is as near as damn it. Spot on. That's brilliant. I don't need to align the, uh, I don't need to do the RF alignment of the, um, or the medium wave at least. Long wave is at 160 kilohertz. So I'll dial that up. 160 kilohertz. Actually, since I'm at the top, they only have one setting for the long wave, and it's down here. It's supposed to be there. It's again a couple of millimeters to the left, and that's good enough for me. So I'm leaving it like that. But let me show you how I've set this, uh, this uh, generator as. If you saw the video where I built this guy, the stepped attenuator, you may recall that, <laughs> as you can see, I haven't got the decals yet, so I haven't labeled this. The decals actually arrived in the mail. I just never, haven't, I just haven't had time to, to do them yet. But this is 3 dB. If it's up, it's zero. Down is 3 dB attenuation. So 3, 6, 12, 24. They're all up, so there's no attenuation, but this one is down. And this is the dummy antenna. It basically emulates an antenna. It turns the signal from your signal generator through there, through this dummy antenna, and then goes to the antenna, and the radio thinks it's receiving an antenna signal. Well, sort of. So what I did here is I had 160 kilohertz. Amplitude there was still the lowest it can be but I was hearing it when I had no attenuation and I had the modulated signal. So basically I was transmitting or well, the radio believes it was receiving 160 kilohertz signal into its antenna port. And that's how I set it up. And the other one was, uh, what is it? 1450. That was the top end of the uh, medium wave. That's basically all I did is just change the frequencies on here, it goes into there, goes through the dummy antenna, and into the antenna port at the back. And the radio believed it was getting an antenna. Brilliant, brilliant, I'm really pleased. So uh, my AM is done. And now all I need to do is wait for the FM section to arrive. And then, as I said before, I'm going to try to correct that problem. In other words, I'm going to try to repair that existing front end. But if I can't manage it, I'll uh, replace it with the other one. I probably will get it. I've done it before, but I like to have one spare just in case. And that, my friends, is the AM section done. And this one is pretty simple, as, as you've seen. There's not much to it. I think this particular radio has more attention paid to the audio than to the actual um, RF sections. Certainly, I paid more attention to that because I thought it was interesting. I hope you have too. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.